as multi-core and multi-processor systems became more widely available, multi-threaded programming also became more popular. However, multi-threaded programming comes with its own difficulties. The first one is now you should take that large process and split it into multiple smaller tasks and uh, implement them in a way that some of these multiple tasks at least could be executing on different cores at the same time. Uh, so you need to be able to divide the activities accordingly. The other thing is when you do the split, the sizes of the tasks should be somewhat comparable in a balanced manner. Of course, each task performs a specific task and they will not be exactly of the same size, but still we'd like to have a balance as much as possible. It's not only the tasks that uh, you need to uh, split the process to and uh, distribute over the uh, cores. You may also need to split the data for each uh, an individual task and split them to the cores. So data splitting is yet another issue that we need to deal with. But when you do this, uh, you should ensure that uh, you're not breaking the dependency uh, between the data and the corresponding tasks. What I mean is the following. Uh, for example, one task might need the output of another task and uh, the data items required by each task should be made available in that specific core and uh, the uh, value of some data item might be dependent on the others. So uh, the order in which you execute the tasks and also on which cores may depend on the overall performance, even on the integrity of the data. And the final difficulty we need to tackle is the testing and debugging operations. Of course, we need to do testing and debugging even if we don't do multi-threading. But with multi-threading, testing and uh, debugging becomes even more difficult. The problem is as follows. For example, you run the program and at runtime, you observe a problem. You hit, let's say, a runtime error. Now you would like to figure out where the error is, what causes the error and how you fix it. But when you try to repeat the uh, execution to find how the error happened, uh, in the debug mode, you may not experience that error. And the reason would be when you run the system at runtime, tasks say T1 and T2 could be running at the same time but when you start debugging, since debugging goes step by step and slower, it is possible that T1 completes before T2, so you don't experience that parallel running uh, that occurs at runtime while debugging. So debugging and testing is more difficult in the case of multi-threaded uh, programming. Now, when we uh, talk about running tasks at almost the same time, we do have two terms that we need to properly understand. One is parallelism and the other one is concurrency. Parallelism, in the case of parallelism, these tasks are, at least some of them, are running at the same time. They're running simultaneously. Like task T1 could be on core one and T2 could be on uh, core two and exactly at the same time, these two tasks may be running together. So they we say they're running in parallel. However, concurrency does not necessarily imply parallelism. Yes, with concurrency, you might have parallelism, but you might also not have parallelism, but you still have concurrency. For example, when we have, when we talk about uh, say round robin scheduling on a single CPU or single processor, single core system, still the tasks are progressing uh, together, but they're not executing at the same time. 
we see an example here for example we have four tasks let's say running according to some scheduling algorithm as t1 t2 3 4 1 2 3 4 in this way in a round robin fashion for example here both process t1 and t2 are actually processing uh, pr sorry progressing it's not finished yet t1 also gets a time sl a slice also later similar to true for t2 but what we can say here is at this time for example all four tasks had a chance to execute some of their instructions so they have all progressed up to some point okay so the progress is going together however things are not running in parallel because we have a single core in the case of parallelism on a multi-core system here we have for example two cores still you have those four tasks but while t1 is executing on core one t2 is also executing so here we have both concurrency but also parallelism uh, when we talk about parallelism then we should consider two types of parallelism the task parallelism is what we have already considered in the previous slide uh, we have distributed the tasks like if i go back to the previous slide we have distributed tasks t1 and t3 on core 1 t2 and t4 on core 2 okay so here we're spreading or distributing the tasks on the available course i have four tasks but only two cores so each one gets uh, two tasks but it's uh, still i'm distributing the tasks over the course in the case of data parallelism we're not uh, in the case of data parallelism we're focused on how we distribute the data okay uh, it could be this even the same set of instructions that are running on different data items for example when you're doing say uh, array operations you could be doing the same operation on all elements of the array in that case uh, if you have multiple cores you will give a subset of your data of your array to one core another subset to another core another subset to another core so that each core deals with the given subset of data in parallel so that the overall execution completes in a shorter time Th that is the data parallelism in that case uh, in the case of data parallelism we're uh, executing the same instruction so we will call that the single instruction because it's the same thing a uh, single instruction on multiple data items on different data items so this single instruction multiple data model is called SIMD single instruction multiple data uh, whereas when we execute not the same instruction but different for example procedure or uh, procedures or functions uh, distributed to different uh, cores as we did in here like t1 is one function it has different instructions t2 is another task with different instructions in this case we have multiple instructions because they're different uh, tasks or methods or uh, functions multiple data so that is MIMD multiple instruction multiple data as the number of threads grow when we uh, do more and more uh, multi-threaded programming the architectural support for threading also improves some CPUs also have hardware threads in the cores so for example the Oracle's Spark T4 processor has eight cores and in each core it has eight hardware threads so in other words Spark T4 can support 64 hardware threads uh, here this uh, figure explains a uh, single-threaded execution and multi-threaded execution 
as we already discussed earlier, but here things are more uh, concrete. Like in a program where you don't apply multi-threaded programming, you still have a thread. Okay, so in that case, you will have a single thread, which means statements uh, instructions are executing one after another, and there is no parallelism here. In that case, you will have a single line of execution, which we call the thread. And of course, this process will have its own code. That means the instructions. It has its data, files, stack, and registers. In the case of a multi-threaded uh, process, now, in one thread, you execute some instructions in some specific sequence. That's one thread. In another thread, you have another execution sequence of other instructions and another one. So in this example, for example, we have three threads running and each thread has its own code, registers and stacks. The rest, uh, sorry, let me correct it. That's my mistake, I'm sorry. Each thread has its own registers and stack, not the code. Uh, so each one has its own copies. The code, data, and the files are being shared by all of them. Otherwise, if uh, each one had its own, then uh, it would be completely uh, separate threads. It would be like processes. So uh, once again, the code, data, and the files are shared, but the registers are different because this thread is executing some instruction, say instruction one, which is say uh, operating on R1 and R2, uh, but this would be executing another instruction which also needs R1 and R2, but uh, R1 and R2 used by the instructions here would be specific registers for uh, this core and this would be uh, for that one. How much speed up can we get when we have uh, multi-threaded programming? Actually, first of all, it depends on two things. It depends on how many cores you have, how much uh, uh, parallelism the hardware provides you through the cores, and uh, it also depends on your program. You could, for example, if you have a lot of money, you can buy a computer system which has many many cores but the programs you're using if they're not for example multi-threaded programs say if you have uh, 16 cores but you're running a single threaded application you would be using one of the cores and the remaining 15 would remain idle okay so it both depends on the hardware but also on the design of the software, how the software was designed. Now, you cannot say, I'm going to make everything in my program parallel. That's not possible. Parts of the program have to be serial and the rest could be converted to parallel execution. Okay? So the performance, therefore, is defined both by the hardware provided and also the program, what portion of your program is serial and what portion could be parallel. So let's say S is the portion uh, of your program that needs to be serial, which means you cannot convert that part to parallel. Okay, that part unfortunately has to run in a single uh, thread. But uh, then the rest, if uh, S is uh, a ratio, uh, at most it would be 1. So typically it's uh, less than 1. So the rest would be 1 minus S. That would be the part that could be parallelized, uh, that could be made parallel. And let's say N is the number of cores available for this process. Amdahl's law says the speed up you can obtain is limited by the formula 
uh, you can see here. Once again, S is the proportion of your program that could be made serial. 1 minus S is the uh, part that could be made parallel. And N is the number of cores. So this is the formula. So if your application, for example, is 25% serial, therefore 75% of it could be made parallel. By the way, this is a very good ratio. Okay. If you compare running this software on a single core system versus on a double core, dual core system, the speed up you will obtain by doubling the number of cores is not two. It could be at most 1.6 times the case where you have a single core. Okay? And this factor of 1.6 is excluding the overhead of managing things around. There is also such overhead. That's why this is the upper limit. Typically, it will be less than 1.6. Now, if you have a lot of money and if you increase N as much as you can, that means take the limit of the right hand side as N goes to infinity, the speed up will approach to 1 over S because when N goes to infinity, this uh, term will go to 0. So the overall formula would go to 1 over S. That means the part that is uh, required to be serial is actually determining how much speed up you can obtain. And this is, as you can see, inversely proportional with the speed up. Uh, so the serial portion of an application has disproportionate effect on the performance gained by the addition of additional cores. In other words, no matter how much money you pay for the hardware, if your software is not designed uh, in a good manner, you will not obtain a real speed up. Uh, 